So we're going to this is, we're 10 minutes late on the market update. I want to touch on this very quickly because the market update is normally I spend 15 minutes going over uh, what's going on in the market so that people who are realtors get a better feel for what's going on and people that are investors can sort of begin to see the future a little bit. But four years ago I did, um, when that was, we did um, investing after the election in our November meeting of 2012 and for those predictions we turned out to be 100% correct. So the reason I'm saying that, we're going to focus on two topics of the campaign and we do not care who gets elected if we're in Knoxville. We're going to focus on uh, Trump's policy on energy and Clinton's policy on education. So, what's important is the household distribution of income. This is Knoxville, Tennessee. It's not Nashville. It's not Charlotte. It's not Raleigh. Right? <coughs> we have a relatively fixed income level in Knoxville, and right now occupancy rates on uh, single-family rental properties are running something like 1990%. The only reason you have a single family rental property that's vacant today is you are looking to upgrade your tenants. Katrina Williams has got a program which she sells which does that for you automatically. And it does a credit profile that raises your raises the rent automatically for higher risk tenants. So what happens is you have a situation in which the Knoxville market, there's a limited amount of housing there are about 6,000 people a year that are moving to Knoxville still today. We have internal growth um, that needs about, uh, about 4,000 houses a year. We're producing about 1,700 housing units total, single family and multifamily. This year we'll, we'll do probably 2,500 total. Last year we did 1,200 total. So we're thousands and thousands of units behind in the Knoxville market. So, as the election is about to occur, I don't care who you vote for or who you don't vote for. I'm a real estate investor. I want to be able to say with some certainty what does one year from today look like? Because if I'm buying a rehab, I'm going to be selling it in the future. If I'm buying a, a lease option, I'm going to be selling it in the future, right? So what we have to be concerned about is not only what's going on today in the shortage of the market, but we have to keep in memory that our market of available people is relatively fixed income. So Trump's energy plan, this is all participation, we don't want to blaze ass up here. Natural resources are great, that's his energy plan. In, in a nutshell, for, for words, that's it, right? Tremendous. Exactly. <laughs> Tremendous. Uh, Exactly. I should have used that. That's good. <laughs> the, the immediate impact on the Knoxville market, if Trump is elected president, and I mean immediate impact, within six months, everything that is coal will be moving again. You, there is, there are school systems that all surround Knoxville, all the way to Charleston, West Virginia, that have been crushed because the mines which used to pay tens of thousands of dollars a year in property taxes are all closed. The property is being devalued because the mines don't appear to be able to ever be working again. So the school systems are being crushed. If Trump is elected, there will be an immediate job opportunity for the coal industry says 100,000 people in Upper East Tennessee, uh, Eastern, Carolina, Eastern Kentucky, and Southwest Virginia. 100,000 new jobs created and in general, those jobs are between fifty and seventy thousand dollars a year. So those jobs are being created, are paying more than fifty-five percent of the population in Knoxville earns today. So if Knoxville is at full employment today, we know it's running around four percent as the unemployment rate in Knoxville. So everybody who wants a job has a job, right? But if you're if you were driving a coal truck five years ago, making seventy thousand a year and you're an auto mechanic in Knoxville making $45,000 a year now, and you get to go drive the truck, you're gonna move back home. Unless the employer really likes you and says, you know, you've been a great mechanic, you do a great job, we don't get any returns, I'm gonna put you on a different bonus plan and we're gonna pay you $55,000 to keep you here in Knoxville. So jobs of all types 
of labor will increase immediately in the entire metro area. The specific impact on Knoxville is the only way employers will be able to keep the employees that they have now, right, is to pay them more money. So what happens to rents and property values as wages go up? They fall up, they go up, right? So Trump gets elected, we're all happy. We're, the people in Union County are specifically happy. Scott County are specifically happy, right? Now, but according to the polls, he may not win. So let's look at what happens if Clinton is elected. And we're going to focus on one policy, her education policy. And her education policy is free is great. Tremendous. So let's look at the impact of what that means on Knoxville. Now this is really important. I'm, I don't want to sound flippant, but these are real situations which you as an investor don't listen to what the politics are. Think how you're going to respond according to the election. Because I assure you, if Trump is elected, coal is king again in East Tennessee. If Hillary is elected, education is free to the public universities. So the first thing that happens under the Clinton education policy is that the small colleges and the small communities where those colleges live are going to be crushed. And the reason is, in Knoxville, Tennessee, if you're in-state tuition at UT Knoxville, the tuition is 12, we're not adding books or anything, it's just pure tuition. It's, for in-state tuition, it's $12,500 a year. Carson Newman, 25,000, Merrill College, 32,000. I know people who have paid, rather than pay $12,000 to go to UT, have paid the $17,000, the, the $20,000 additional to go to Merrill College. It was a struggle, but they, they said we, they could justify doing that. When you say that UT Knoxville is free, all of a sudden that's thirty-two thousand. You're it's not the twenty thousand dollars. You can't rationalize it. So it's easy to say that people that are making choices to go to Maryville College or going to Carson Newman today won't go there. And if you just multiply that times all of these small colleges that are around. You can see where it's easy to add 5,000 people more going to the University of Tennessee today at the Knoxville campus than are going today at the Knoxville campus. I just made up the number 5,000. Nobody's got any real projection, but 5,000 is a really easy number to get to when you think of the state of Tennessee and free, right? We're not going to worry about how the university expands, where the money comes from. We're not going to worry about any of that. We are real estate investors. We are only concerned with what we're going to do to benefit our children and our community, right? We're interested in what we're going to be doing that makes the community better, but at the same time improves the value of our own lives, right? So now we know that there's going to be 5,000 more students looking for housing. And I'm just making that number up. Nobody knows, but I'm assuring you, you should go home and Google this information. The most of the student housing that exists today is already by the bedroom. This gets to be important because what Duncan is going to talk about is by the bedroom. So we already have 15,000 housing units set up renting to college students that are renting by the bedroom today. In general, the new housing that's being built is somewhere between six and seven hundred dollars a bedroom. The um, the older housing in the Ford is generally trading for four to Five hundred. Those are the numbers I can see. This is Steve Goldman, the number one apartment broker, by the way, in the state of Tennessee. Well, not the state, but uh, <laughs> work so we've got a student portfolio now that's selling about fifty thousand dollars a bed is the sale price. So it could be a six bedroom house, single unit, six bedrooms, fifty thousand dollars a month. And how much do they rent for? What's the average rent on in that older unit? Oh, boy. Like five hundred a month or something. Yeah, five six hundred a bedroom. And the uh, and I was just at uh, two different meetings of UT, and they are raising the enrollment for the first time in a decade or more up about five thousand. And so what happens is they're raising it now with a twelve thousand five hundred dollar tuition. Think what happens when it's free, right? And the reason that that's important is that these policies are like created in a vacuum. Trump's policy is good 
for coal and natural resources, but there is that environmental issue that some of us do cons are concerned about, some of us more than others. You younger people, I don't care as much, I'm old. But <laughs> so, um, I, I was born into a world that had lead in the air and coal dust in, uh, on the furniture. So if I go out that way, it's okay with me, right? You all listen to that. Clinton's policy, again, in a vacuum. Because if you own rental housing in the UT area today, all of your tenants just got a $12,500 raise. So what, what happens? The parents, by the way, for the realtors in the room, property values are automatically going to go up because the number of parents that have, are sending children to the university, they just got a raise because they now can say, I'm not going to pay the $20,000 a year difference to send you to Maryland College. Your warm body is going to UT Knoxville. You're going to live at home for the first year, right? So the parents got a raise, which makes them wealthier, and they're able to buy the house that they want to have. Right? They're, they're able to take those savings that they were paying, and they can reinvest. They can buy a rental property. They can buy a bigger house. So the rents, I don't know a single property owner whose tenants get a $12,500 a year raise that wouldn't look at raising the rent. Right? You want to improve the property. You want the property to be nice. You want the people to remain in the property. But it's foolish to, to allow people to continue to live in a rental property and not increase the income. Now, when Duncan's talking, he's going to be showing you how to take this kind of information and really, really increase it exponentially. Because rents follow wages. Schools follow property taxes. Counties where there are no property taxes, they have bad schools. Where there are bad schools, parents move. Where parents move, the hospitals fail. When the hospitals fail, it starts all over again. Where schools are strong, parents are strong, people choose to move into those communities. They want to live in the better neighborhoods where the better schools are. They take the worst performing schools, and when the parents become involved, they turn them into the best performing schools. And so what happens is it doesn't make any difference to us as real estate investors, not in the least, who wins the election. What makes a difference to us is how we manage those investments. And four weeks from today, we will know, as a matter of fact, now that I'm saying that, our, our meeting next month, I didn't think about it this time, is on election night. We, we might have an election party. So I thought about that. That sounds like a pretty good idea. I just, I just, I just make that up right then. That's, that's a pretty good idea. So, yeah, tremendous. <laughs> so, uh, the reason that we want people to begin to think in terms of this, as new investors, as people who are beginning to get started, these are the fundamentals. This is the blocking and tackling that really makes you money. Because you're having to predict what is going to happen at a time in the future.